On July 12, 2025, an incredibly rare meteorological phenomenon occurred near LaSalle, Utah. It all began two days earlier on July 10th, when a 68-year-old man was burning a pile of sagebrush behind his house. After burning the brush, he improperly discarded the ashes, which in turn led to a small fire. That small fire quickly grew larger and larger, to 50 acres in size. It was at this point, around 3 in the afternoon, that several locals reported the fire to officials. Due to gusty 35 mile per hour winds, by the next morning on July 11th, the fire was over 4,000 acres in size. Several buildings had already been consumed by the flames, and 250 people had to be evacuated as the growing fire was lingering closer and closer to their homes. Firefighting crews began to work around the clock to slow the spread, but despite their efforts, the fire had grown to over 6,000 acres by that evening. Things had gotten out of control. On the morning of July 12th, the fire was still going strong and growing by the hour. By noon, the fire was nearly 8,000 acres in size. Several more crews arrived to help extinguish the flames, but suddenly, around 1 in the afternoon, something strange was beginning to take place. The fire had grown so large that it had created its own weather system, what is known as a firestorm. The constant layers of smoke had risen so high into the atmosphere that they began to cool and then transform into condensation. A pyrocumulonimbus cloud with its own weather system had formed. Now while this sort of thing is uncommon, it isn't anything that hadn't been seen before. That is until the entire weather system began to rotate. Crosswinds from the LaSalle Mountains were interacting with the storm system in a unique and dangerous way, causing the whole thing to spin. And then all of a sudden, a massive tornado began to form. This was an incredibly rare meteorological event. We're not talking about a small little fire whirl. These things are actually quite common. No, this was a full-fledged fire tornado. And the footage is absolutely insane. This was an actual threatening tornado that had formed from a wildfire. Looking at radar and velocity scans, you can clearly see rotation. The tornado lasted 12 minutes and mostly stayed in the same place. Thankfully, there were no fatalities. However, there was some structural damage and one fire engine did get caught inside. The footage from this is also insane. Surprisingly, that fire engine only received minor damage. The Grand Junction, Colorado National Weather Service office actually went out and surveyed the tornado's destruction. They concluded the damage was consistent with wind speeds around 122 miles per hour and officially gave the tornado an EF2 rating. 2025 had a lot of very interesting and historic tornado events. The most prominent might be the first EF5 in over 10 years, the Enderlin, North Dakota EF5. But to me, the July 12th LaSalle, Utah EF2 fire tornado was the most interesting of the year, perhaps even the most rare. There have been stories and footage of true fire pyro tornadoes before, but this was the first time in history that one had been so well documented. I mean, the footage, the flying debris, this is some apocalyptic stuff here. Utah is not known at all for tornadoes. There was the famous downtown Salt Lake City EF2 tornado of 1999, but overall, tornadoes in the state are quite rare. That means that the 2025 Deer Creek EF2 fire tornado is actually one of the most significant tornado events in the state's history. Today, we are uncovering the truth behind the insanely rare natural phenomenon that is the fire nado. What are the different types slash levels of fire tornadoes? What are some other historic examples? And will these become more common in the future? That's what we're going to talk about. Let's get into it and let's start off by going over the different types slash levels of fire nados. Starting with the most common form and the most well known, what we call the level one fire whirl sometimes referred to as a fire devil. These are small vortices of fire, smoke, and ash. These are very similar to dust devils in terms of their formation. They are relatively small and are caused by convection slash rising hot air. Fire is hot, just FYI, and hot air, it rises due to convection. So the air above the fire is rising and sometimes a little swirling eddy comes in, that hot air goes up and then a little spinning flame forms. They form most often in windy conditions. Not like tornado windy, but like 
like normal windy, like 30 mile per hour winds. These flame eddies can be close to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. They average about five meters or 15 feet wide and are on average 10 to 50 meters, AKA 33 to 160 feet tall. Usually they only last for a minute or so. I see these pop up all the time on YouTube shorts, on Instagram reels, and some YouTubers have even been able to recreate these with fans. They look pretty insane. But they are only our level one fire tornado. While yes, they are obviously dangerous, they are not quite as dangerous as the next level, the level two pyronado. These are kind of the more extreme version of the fire whirl. These are a little larger and more violent. They tend to be between 10 and 50 meters wide and hundreds of meters tall underneath a pyrocumulus cloud. A pyrocumulus cloud is a cumulus cloud that formed from a large fire. Okay, so stop. Let's talk about that really quick. What is going on here? When you have a larger fire, like a wildfire slash forest fire slash bush fire, huge amounts of smoke get lofted high into the atmosphere. These can then create a firestorm. A firestorm is, well, a storm, a weather system created by a large fire. When the hot air from the fire rises, it creates a vacuum that brings in more and more air from the side. These smoke clouds then rise higher up into the cooler part of the atmosphere where they turn into condensation clouds. These are known as pyrocumulus clouds, AKA cumulus clouds created by a fire. These pyrocumulus clouds can transform into thunderstorms that can even cause lightning and black rain filled with ash and soot. This is a photo of a large pyrocumulus cloud over Hiroshima right after it was destroyed by an atomic bomb. For a long time, people thought that this was the mushroom cloud from the atomic bomb. It wasn't until much later that people realized it was actually a pyrocumulus storm system from the fires that were caused by the nuclear bomb. It's a pretty large cloud, but we'll get to even larger clouds in a moment. So back to level two pyro tornadoes. Sometimes if conditions are just right, larger fire devils can form inside or near a large forest fire. And on rare occasion, their heights can reach the base of a pyrocumulus cloud. Pyronados tend to last five to 10 minutes and are mostly filled with smoke and ash. Wind speeds can get close to 70 miles per hour in the EF1 range. Okay, so we have discussed pyrocumulus clouds and their associated firestorms, but if conditions in the atmosphere are just right, if a fire is very intense, these towering pyrocumulus clouds can grow larger and larger and larger and even higher into the atmosphere where they can then form the ultra rare pyrocumulonimbus cloud, AKA cumulonimbus flamagenitus. Wow, what a word. Okay, cumulonimbus clouds, also referred to as thunderhead clouds, are the clouds that produce large and often violent thunderstorms. And sometimes they can develop an inner rotating mesocyclone. These are called supercells. And it is the supercell thunderstorm that produces the classic Wizard of Oz violent tornado that we all know and some of us love. So we know fires can create pyrocumulonimbus clouds, but can there be a pyro supercell, a rotating mesocyclonic pyrocumulonimbus supercell cloud? In theory, yes, during an extremely rare occasion. Which brings us to level three, true tornadic fire tornadoes. These nightmarish tornadoes can be over a mile wide with the wind speeds in the EF2 to EF4 range, or about 100 to 200 miles per hour. Not only is there a fire blazing all around, but winds are lofting roofs off of homes, tossing cars, and flattening trees. They can last for about 30 minutes. Along with fire tornadoes, you can also get lightning, rain, and hail. There have even been reports of black hail caused by a pyrocumulonimbus storm. So how do these form? Well, essentially these only form when very specific atmosphere conditions are at play. One, you have to have a huge fire over a forest, over a volcano, or potentially, unfortunately, over a city. Two, that fire creates a larger pyrocumulonimbus cloud. And then finally, three, the atmosphere needs to be favorable for supercell development and tornado genesis. You need some atmospheric instability, sufficient cape, and strong vertical wind shear. The other factor that makes these incredibly super rare is that even if you have the perfect conditions, you have you know, the cape, all that stuff, the fire itself is so windy and chaotic that the environment is very unstable, and that can hinder the organized nature of a supercell and its accompanying tornado genesis. So a lot of things have to come together. In modern meteorological history, there have only been a few examples of true level three fire tornadoes, the most recent being the 2025 Deer Creek fire tornado that we mentioned in the intro. 
Surprisingly, the National Weather Service never issued a tornado warning with this event because the rotation was so subtle and so quick that there just wasn't time to issue one. However, in 2020, for the first time in recorded history, the National Weather Service did issue a tornado warning from a fire-induced tornado. On August 15th, 2020, there was a large wildfire near Loyalton, California. This wildfire produced a large pyrocumulonimbus cloud, and the National Weather Service thought it might be able to spawn a tornado. So they issued the very first tornado warning that was related to a pyrocumulonimbus cloud. There were several other smaller fire tornadoes reported from that event, but thankfully there was never anything crazy. There was never a true level three fire tornado. So the warning was able to expire shortly after it was released. Another prominent modern example of a true fire tornado came during the 2018 car fire in Redding, California. Like the Deer Creek tornado, you can clearly see strong rotation. This tornado was incredibly given an EF3 rating from the National Weather Service with winds over 140 miles per hour, making it one of the strongest tornadoes in California's history and definitely one of the strongest fire tornadoes ever recorded. The level three mesocyclonic fire tornado is a somewhat new field in meteorology. In fact, one wasn't fully observed until 2003 during the Canberra bushfires in Australia specifically at Mount Arrowing on January 18th. And this tornado, we actually have footage of captured by Tom Bates. Holy Jesus, this is, this is bad news. It's coming straight down towards David Ellison's place, like a tornado. Just like a big fireball tornado, look at it. Oh. You can see right there, yep, that's definitely a tornado mixed within the wildfire. This fire tornado had wind speeds at 160 miles per hour, giving it an EF3 classification and so far the highest rated fire tornado in recorded history. This video also records a flashover event where hundreds of acres instantly burned in only a matter of seconds. This was caused by a strong inflow of oxygen from the updraft and it may have played a role in the fire tornado's formation. But if we dip further back in time, there are several other rather grim fire tornado incidents, the most somber being the 1923 Tokyo Fire Tornado. After a series of large earthquakes, several fires broke out throughout Tokyo. Unfortunately, there was a typhoon located off the coast that fanned the flames into a massive urban fire. A large fire tornado then formed and took the lives of 38,000 people. Seriously. It, it actually happened. This event is incredibly sad and I'm actually releasing a members only video covering the event along with this video. So if you're a member, be sure to check it out. Oh, but hey, by the way, if you wanna become a channel member, that would be awesome. I just launched this not that long ago. I'm kind of testing it out, but what I'm going to do is do a monthly members only video as well as priority reply to comments. And I'm also gonna do a monthly members only live stream. So. Be sure to check that out if you're interested, but let's go back to historic fire tornado events. The very first recorded instance of what is believed to be a true fire tornado occurred during the 1871 Peshtigo Fire, specifically over the town of Peshtigo in Wisconsin. The Peshtigo Fire was a huge forest fire that burned 1.2 million acres of the northeastern part of Wisconsin on October 8, 1871. But during the Peshtigo Fire, the townsfolk of both Peshtigo and the nearby town of Williamsonville claimed to see several large fire tornadoes form. These large fire tornadoes then destroyed numerous buildings, as well as lofted rail cars high into the sky. Another very tragic event where people resorted to seeking shelter underwater in a river to avoid the heat and their demise. And of course, there are other examples during World War II, where there were huge fires throughout Europe and Japan from fire bombings. One specific fire tornado was reported during the bombing of Hamburg, Germany. 
This fire tornado was 1,500 feet tall with winds over 100 miles per hour. One eyewitness account of the Hamburg fire said this. The firestorm was now raging through all the streets. We had only just reached the door to the air raid shelter. At this moment, something snapped in a neighbor and caught up in the panic, he took his bed cover and wanted out of the shelter. None of us could stop him. We saw him still, but only as a living torch carried by the firestorm flying through the air. We were all deeply shocked by this. Our situation at this point was almost hopeless. That's, this is a, this is kind of a dark video. Okay. Another somewhat interesting case of pyro tornado genesis came during the San Luis Obispo fire of April 7th, 1926. This case is interesting because this is a really solid example of tornadoes being spawned by a pyro supercell outside of the burning area like a normal tornado. The fire was initially caused by a bolt of lightning striking an oil reserve, creating a huge explosion. The fire created its own weather system with a pyrocumulonimbus cloud that reportedly produced over 100 small to medium sized tornadoes. Check out some of these photos of the tornadoes that were spawned. Incredible. One of these tornadoes was even destructive and life-threatening. So this tornado, this specific tornado formed when the initial fire reached a new oil reserve. When it happened, the whole thing went up in a flashover event, kind of like what we talked about earlier. Eyewitnesses claim that when these flames went thousands of feet into the air, a large fire tornado suddenly formed out of nowhere. Said fire tornado then moved away from the fire out over the plains where it would destroy a trailer claiming two lives. Others were thrown from the tornado and survived. It seemed that every time a new oil reserve exploded and went up in flames, a new fire tornado formed. The furthest any tornado traveled from the fire was about three miles. That's pretty crazy. The atmosphere in general was pretty unstable at this time due to another storm system, so that's likely the main factor in tornado genesis. Remember, this whole thing started from a lightning strike, so clearly the weather was not ideal. All right, so let's talk about the chances of a severe and deadly fire tornado in the future. Who's at risk? What are the atmospheric conditions that can create such horrific monsters? And is there a way to warn people in the moments leading up to a fire tornado? In terms of areas that are most at risk for fire tornadoes, obviously those who live in places where forest fires frequently occur, like the West, California, Washington, Oregon, are at risk. Of course, major wildfires can occur in the East as well. The Peshtigo fire in Wisconsin is one example. But if we want to adequately warn people about the risk of fire tornado formations in the future, we must learn from the past. The deadliest fire tornadoes in history had two major risk factors. One, obviously a large fire had formed, as well as the firestorm. And two, the atmosphere was relatively unstable. In 1923, in Tokyo, Japan, for example, there was the nearby typhoon. In 1926, the San Luis Obispo fire spawned tons of level 2 tornadoes, and this was likely due to an unstable atmosphere and a nearby storm system. So large fires and bad weather are not a good combination, unless there's a lot of rain. That could be, that could be helpful. Hit it with the downburst. That would be very helpful during a uh, fire. Okay, sorry, this is kind of a serious video. Last year in Los Angeles, specifically the Pacific Palisades, Malibu, and Altadema, went up in flames in one of the costliest and worst natural disasters in US history. This really was an unprecedented event. Thankfully, a proper firestorm slash tornado did not form during this event. Why? Well, this event was caused by a very intense Santa Ana wind pattern with winds approaching 100 miles per hour. These intense winds hindered the formation of a pyrocumulonimbus cloud. Classic firestorms often intensify under comparatively lighter background winds, enough to ventilate and spread the fire, but not so strong that they dominate the circulation, allowing the fire's own convective engine to become the main driver. Thankfully, even though we've only had a few incidents, we have learned a decent amount about power tornado genesis that we may be able to see the warning signs before they occur. And then we can get said information out ahead of time to save lives. Unfortunately, fire tornadoes and footage of fire tornadoes will likely become more common in the decades ahead. Thankfully though, our building materials are not nearly as combustible as the building materials behind historic deadly urban fire tornadoes. So there is some hope. But yes, thank you so much for watching. If you're a member, be sure to check out the bonus video. We'll see you next time.